fat bear said he was Dominican, but he didn't know the capital. Aiming to park it in Japan to round out his pen to Trevor log. No mice, said Inky Fingered Custom Men after smudging the forgery. Go west and find safe hibernation, they said to the exiled royalty. Oh, fat bear, oh, oh fat bear, don't poke the one with buttons, yes. You might think his chair's too big, but it's the little bear who governs. Fat Bear never had gated community or Mexican ice pick dreams. He found his solidarity writing op eds against the regime. He said the cool pack was warming and that he wouldn't last a week and then went south without a smear to find a winning streak. Oh, fat bear, oh, oh, fat bear, don't poke the one with buttons, yes. You might think his ball cuts too high, but it's a little bear who governs. Fat bear found his landing, oh, the same time as the test. And it was but two days later that he made his final rest. Two doves flew down to meet him, almost like in Mexico. And the dawning of the great red dress, but with poison drops to an ear hole. Oh, fat bear, oh, oh fat bear, don't poke the one with the buttons. For he's making the world hear him now As the little bear who governs Fat bear laid on the cooling board While officials waited for the nod And crowds looked out in the front lawn To see if it was where little bear had trod One dove had laughing feathers so loud it was like an apprehending ask so they clipped her wings and hoped for more loud laughs they could track oh fat bear oh fat bear you poke the one with buttons and he's making the world see him now as the little bear who governs got confirmation as his former neighbors released the pages of a letter from the late defector asking little bear to spare him his rages and a chat with a northern driver with orders to give him the bump and go so little bear wanted him back home blood met microscope oh fat bear oh fat bear you poke the one with buttons and soon we'll all be sure to know it was the little bear who governs fat bear was covered in the north as a bad case of the undercooked Anchors told inside jokes to the followers, which could not be overlooked. Another dove was quickly captured, but she never laughed as loud. And still the path was going north, yeah. like it was trimmed down for the crowds. Hey, fat bear, oh, fat bear, you poke the one with buttons. And will a knock on the big north door open to the little bear who governs? Yeah. While the world mulled over Fat Bear, that first dove kept her laughing trend. 
with no known ties to the north. She said her goals were Kardashian. She only thought there'd be more cameras after Little Bear bought her groceries. This was her chance to be a star. So why question the budgetary? Oh, Fat Bear, oh, Fat Bear, you poke the one with the buttons and the Little Bear pokes the secret wants of those who don't care that he governs or even know. Some tested locks on the morgue to snatch up Fat Bear's remains. But they never could come as close as they did when the drops were laid. Reports found a secret venom made by men in state sewn hazmat gowns. This was a dance meant for more than kin. The invitation sent all worlds round. The shambles of the South began to shine After a presidential call to cell phone ring The streets were divided in support Over their leaders' place in the fling The scuffles broke out between them As soon as charges were pressed and the little bear watched it all with glee. He'd be happy to clean up the mess. Oh, fat bear, oh, fat bear, you poke the one with buttons, but you were just a small move on the board to the little bear who governed. Fat bear was phased out of rotation. The more Little Bear was phased in Aiming for the South and Japan Neighbors outlined defense placements The businessman decreed to his allied half He'd place his fire and fury there And all the world had their fingers in now Much too close to the hardware Oh, Fat Bear, oh, Fat Bear, you poke the one with the buttons, and you're looking like Franz Ferdinand to all those who will never govern.
the seas are sure to be rough. The land will be rocky and tough. A hand out of blind man's bluff. Supported by the strength of our love. So this is called Dusty Vines, and it's a song about Arizona wine.
have started with a key. That's where I remember it. Open in a world we hardly see. It needs no one defending it. All the purpose and possibility. The option is accepting it. Working like it took centuries to perfect the fit. started with a key so much more descended it if there's one thing you can see here I find the perfect fit Well, 
welcome, welcome, welcome to the Boots and Ballads Tony Llama Giveaway. Are you guys excited? I am pumped. It's great to see you here. Hey, Eugene. Good to see you, Nathaniel. Lucas is in the house. Nathan, good to see you, buddy. Drifter. Carol, good to see you, Cham Bam. Death Like Reviews. What the hell? I thought you were supposed to be camping. <laughs> hey, Katie Rose. Hey, Frank. Good to see you, David. Yo, DJ. How's it going, Noob RPG? Chase. Enrique, good to see you. Jonathan Smith, Wyatt James, Griffin, Dunby, Sebastian, Tony Montana back in here. Bobby, good to see you. Alicio, Connor, TK, Cooper, Rodrigo, nice to see you guys. Diego Trabuco is back in the house. Yo, Dixie Cowboy, Kevin, thank you all for joining me this evening. Happy Friday to you. Cheers. Wow, we're gonna have some fun tonight. We're gonna have lots of fun tonight. Whew. Are you guys ready? I am so pumped. Huge thanks to Circle B for making this possible. I am so excited to be giving away a brand new pair of Tony Llama boots. So excited. You guys wanna see what they look like again, right? Let's get them out here. Here they are again. This is what's up for grabs. Tony Llama Bone White Lizard. This is the Y1305 model that you can get. It's the new old stock. That new old stock that you can get from Circle B Western Wear. And of course, you don't have to choose. You don't have to choose the Tony Llama Bone Colored Lizard. You can choose a different Tony Llama, but come on. Come on. Let's get fancy. It's almost summertime. It's, it's the time of year where you're gonna be wearing these kinds of boots, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Hello, hello, guys. Oh, you want one of those tumblers, Death Like? I see you, I see you. Well, should we get right into it for everybody in here? All you 67 folks on the live stream right now who are in here early, who have been in the live chat for the last 20 minutes, Neil, you were in here earlier today. You must have taken a nap and then come back. <laughs> all right, let's get right into a small little giveaway for all you folks in here early because uh, Death Like Reviews is chomping at the bit to get one of these special tumblers that I got to show you guys here in a second. Here's the first prize package. A Wallaroo phone wallet, which also works inside of a boot. We're going all white. Just in case you do win these bone colored lizard boots, you can fit one of these white wallets inside too. A Boots and Ballads sticker. Yes. A bottle opener from Twisted Willow Fabrication. This is a uh, Boots and Ballads bottle opener. Let me get up close here so you can see. I don't know, can you see that? It's a little dark, a little weird. Anyways, it says Jeremiah Craig Boots and Bells on. This is stainless steel made by Twisted Wheel Fabrication. It's also got a little tab on the end where you can sort of get underneath some beer cans if you wanted to open up any beer cans like that. Also in this prize package is my CD Gardener Hands. And <laughs> here's what Death Like Reviews is talking about. Also in this prize package is a limited edition Boots and Ballads tumbler, which has Circle B Western wear on the back. This is a red one. This is an awesome tumbler engraved at Twisted Willow Fabrication. So not only are they working with metal like you saw in the beginning in that commercial that I put in the pre-stream, they're also engraving products too, so you can learn a lot more about Twisted Willow Fabrication at twistedwillowfabrication.com. So let's get right into it. You guys know how this works. I'm gonna put comment now in the live chat and every comment after that will be entered to win and then I'm gonna play a song and when the song's done, I'm gonna stop it and then we're gonna choose a winner of those comments. Don't spam, please. <clears throat> so here we go. Comment now. There we go. And let me pull up the ticker. Bam. There we go. All right. All right. So we got this thing going here. We got this thing going. What do I do with my pick? Here, I'm just like a regular. I'm just like a regular musician here, always losing my picks. 
Can you believe that? It's a good thing I got this little basket. All those picks in. I got a, I got a story for you guys to kick things, kick this thing off here. I got a story of thieves. We got a bunch of stories to tell tonight. You know, back in 2019, up here in New England, there was a gang of thieves called the Nightcrawler Crew who made their way around to different corner stores and gas stations to steal cigarettes, but they would break in in really elaborate ways. So they would use power tools, come in through the skylights, you know, sneak across the floor so that they couldn't uh, set off the motion detectors and vibration detectors that these little corner stores and gas stations had and then they would steal cigarettes and then get out of there without being caught by any of the security systems that any of these places had and you're like well why didn't they steal anything more valuable i mean tobacco products are pretty valuable on the black market don't get me wrong but they could have gone for the money they could have gone for something else but they always went for cigarettes and it made me think Maybe these people are just practicing for bigger and bigger scores, right? So I wrote a song about it called Nightcrawler Rehearsal. You gotta practice, right? Practice makes perfect. Here it is. Just like practice as they're crawling across the floor Slipped in through the skylights just to pocket marble rows They move so graceful in the night But leave thousands in the drawer It's done for the deed and not the dollar Watch them protect their silhouettes Staying quiet and staying low Just watch how they move And you can tell they've watched you before As you watch them on the tape And wonder what they came in for Looks like it's rehearsal for the Nightcrawlers Nightcrawler rehearsal is on you The corner stores are not the cursed on fools The plans are universal gone through Stealing power Nightcrawler rehearsal is on you No need to lock out the purse and jewels Aiming higher with a search for truth Our Nightcrawlers They only hit a town once And they're all a different stage up here in New England, there are plenty of places to play. You can't even hear the tool bag clink as they make their escape. Looking like they hardly caused a bother. Someone said it takes 10,000 hours to be an expert at your trade. But you have to work smart and you have to work late. So it's tough not to wonder what they take when they finally get paid. But it's still rehearsal for the Nightcrawlers. Nightcrawler rehearsal is on you. The corner stores are not the cursed on fools. The plans are universal gone through and still in power. Nightcrawler rehearsal is on you. No need to lock up the purse and jewels. Aiming higher with a search for are not the cursed on fools their plans are universal gone through and stealing power nightcrawler rehearsal is on you no need to lock up the purse and jewels aiming higher when they search for truth our nightcrawler has yeah. nightcrawler rehearsal this is based off a true story and they were never caught they're still out there onto those bigger scores, and we're not hearing about those bigger scores. Whew. Practice makes perfect, folks. <laughs> All right, we're stopping it there. Stop. Bam. All right. 
Looks like Evie got in the last comments. 84 folks in here. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I'm about to pick a winner here of this first prize package. So let's get at it. Let me get the random number generator here. Bang. All right, here we go. I have your, hey Alex. Alex Cruder on the stream, how's it going buddy? Childhood friends, me and Alex. We gone boot shopping together. All right, here we go, here's your winner. Let me count it out. There it is, we got it, we got it. And it's with the comment, New Englander on board. Winner is Jonathan Smith. Whoa, ha. Winner is Jonathan Smith, congrats. Congrats, Jonathan, congrats, congrats. Woo, yes, we got our first winner of the night. You get the Boots and Ballads and Circle B Western Wear Limited Edition Tumblr. You get my first CD, Gardener Hands. You get a Boots and Ballads sticker and a bottle opener from Twisted Wheel Fabrication and a Wallaroo phone wallet. Yes. Here we go. We are off to the races. What a great start. Thank you all for joining me this evening for the Tony Lama Circle B Western Wear Giveaway. I'm so pumped. So pumped. Mm. Good to see you guys here. Congrats. Congrats. Whoo. All right. Whew. I just want to remind everybody that I won't be announcing the winner of the boots until the end we got a show to play i have all of these other things here to give away i got two more prize packages with all of the same stuff that was in the first one for those folks out there who getting antsy but we got show we gotta have some fun we're gonna t chat in the live chat and then i will announce the winner of the boots at the end and i am so excited that one of you watching right now maybe you might not be watching but maybe after the fact, one of you watching is gonna be walking away with a brand new pair of boots tonight. Mm. Love it. Love getting boots on people's feet. All right. But if you guys remember, I asked you a question when you filled out the form to enter this giveaway. You guys remember what that question was? The question was, would you wear white or bone colored cowboy boots or have you already let me pull up those statistics for you because 407 people entered this giveaway and we got some pretty good data to show everybody here so let me pull up the white boots poll here it is would you or do you wear white cowboy boots and over here we got 50 what is it 59% of you, so about two-thirds, right? It's close to two-thirds. <clears throat> close to two-thirds of you want to wear white boots or bone-colored boots, but you just haven't had the chance yet. Well, hopefully that chance is tonight. 20% <laughs> of you, 21% of you are skeptical, but you're considering it. You got to be sold. I understand it. I understand. And... 13% of you, 13% of you said you would never ever wear bone colored or white colored boots. And if you win tonight, you're definitely choosing a different color Tony Lama boot. Respect, I understand. It is a very bold color for sure. It's a bold color. And then there was a small percentage of you folks out there who already have white or bone colored boots and rock them on a regular basis. That's what that blue sliver is right there. But I'm happy to see that around 60% of you are willing to try it, but just haven't had the chance yet. So I'm hoping that that chance is tonight. Whew. 
It takes confidence, Christopher Carter says. It takes you gotta you gotta be able to pull them off, right? If you're gonna wear it, if you're gonna get that attention, you gotta have the confidence to pull it off 100 percent Connor only has dark brown and tan. I mean, those are classic colors, though, to have. I think uh, last year when we did the JW Boot Company giveaway around this time last year, I asked, you know, what everybody's favorite colors were, and pretty much everybody's or half of everybody' favorite color is brown, and then it's black. So, I mean, very few people even said white last year, and here we are doing <laughs> doing a, a giveaway for a bone white <laughs> pair of boots. <laughs> Thank you for filling out that information. Those polls are always fun to do and to show you guys uh, where everybody stands here, who watches these videos and enters. It's so much fun. So much fun. Mm. So cool. So thank you. Oops, that was the wrong screen. I wanted to do that screen. All right. And before we get into the next song here, I had a call from Paul, I believe. So I have a, a voicemail number that you can call. And I'm thinking about utilizing it here a little bit more and I just got a phone call earlier this week from Paul and I wanted to play it for you guys because uh, it was very nice of him to take the time and leave me a message. So here's Paul calling in to my Google Voice voicemail. Hey Jeremiah, how you doing? It's Paul. I just figured let me give you a call. You put your number up there and uh, I just got a nice pair of brown bison boots. And uh, I love them. And it's about, I'm going to say, 35 years since I got a pair of cowboy boots. <laughs> but I saw your channel and uh kind of inspired me to go pick out a pair. Uh, these are Double H, by the way. And uh, I'll tell you, oh, my God, like a glove, brother. They fit great. Now I'm hooked. And <laughs> I'm looking to get some real nice ones. But uh just wanted to say thanks, brother. And I appreciate it. Appreciate all your videos, and I watch them. Thanks. Huge thanks to Paul for calling in. Oh, man, the Bison boots are awesome. And Double H, what a great way to go. Oh, you guys are awesome for calling me, and thank you so much for the phone call, Paul. 35 years since you got your last pair of boots. I love it. Bring it, bringing it back. Come on. I love it. Boots never should leave anybody's life but i'm glad that you're back at it with the double h bison boots yes love it and remember if you guys want to call me my voicemail number is 253-254-5898 and i've had a couple of requests to do live q and a's and uh, i figured i was live enough where you could ask me questions but maybe there wasn't enough focus on the actual question and answer part so if you guys want to ask some questions through voicemail and then on March 26th I will do a live Q&A and I'll start playing those uh, those messages live and answering them and then also answering them in the live chat as well so I want to do them on a quarterly basis if you guys are interested in that and just sort of hang out ask me questions whatever comes to your mind and uh, it'll be like an ask me anything and then that one is gonna be on March 26th I think so we're going we're going to have some fun with the uh, voicemail. I want to try to use it more and uh, see what happens. So if you guys are interested in having me any, having any questions for me, then uh, leave a, a voicemail message at 253-254-5898. And on March 26th, I might play it and answer it live. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Nathaniel asks, one shot, how did you know what my uh, outline was? It's like you're reading my outline. Am I sharing my screen here or something? Because one shot is next. <clears throat> okay, if you got anything to drink, if you got a shot or anything, I hope you pour it now because we're going to do a little cheers here because this song is about trading one bullet for one shot of liquor apparently you used to be able to do stuff like that in the old west when you come off off the trail and you only had your bullets you didn't have any money from being paid from your work yet you used to be able to walk into a bar and trade 45 caliber bullets for a shot of whiskey or bourbon or whatever else you wanted and it had to be a 45 caliber bullet 
because that was the most popular round. Now, a lot of people say that that's hogwash, an old wives tale, it's not even true, but whether it's true or not, it's still a damn fun story to tell, especially in this song when using the characters from Tombstone. Yeah, this song is told from the perspective of Doc Holliday. Cheers to you guys. Let's go. One shot. Mm. Ah, woo. We're having fun tonight. Let's do it. We gotta have a reverb though. There we go. Coming off the trail with Wyatt, Bat, James, and Virgil, and we were thirsty for some whiskey but had not a penny to our names. My boots were too dusty and my muscles too tired to sit with some inbreds and lie through my teeth for a few card games so the other four boys got a table and I moseyed on up to the bar. They often joked there was more silver on my tongue than in all of Tombstone. I said, barkeep, we came in only with our guns and good looks. We ain't good with the broom, ain't good with the books, but a drink would liven up our weary bones. What do you say? And he said, empty your wheel gun out on the bar and we'll See how many rounds there are. Yeah. One shot for one shot, and I'm only dealing 45s. One shot for the whole lot, and that leaves you with one shot for your life. Well, I looked the bullets, but I look longer at the bottle. As much as I hated to part with those five rounds, life's for taking chances. So I told the boys we had a deal and they all came up for their drinks. Then my eyes stopped at the stairs and big nose Kate and I were exchanging glances. Last I saw her was when the rangers took me from her bed, but she helped me escape before they could put a rope around my neck. She walked on over to where the mouth breathers were playing. One spouted a curse at her. I guess they weren't playing with a whole deck. I said, you got one shot to apologize or I'll put one shot between your eyes. One shot for one shot and I'm only dealing 45s. One shot is all you got. You got one shot for your life. He said something dumb like he don't apologize to whores So I figured he was asking for all the things that would come next I still had my whiskey in my hand when he reached for his gun But he was all wrist and it's all hip so I kept my word a la tete Then I was empty but I hadn't spilled a drop His friend made a move but I was quick to my knife He knew he'd been beat by the shine of the blade I finally drank and said give me your bullets And I'll let you leave with your life Before he ran, he let them fall on the ground And I bought the boys and Kate's another round One shot for one shot And I'm only dealing 45s One shot is all you got You got one shot for your life Yeah One shot One shot, yes! <laughs> That's a fun song. I don't care if it's a true story or not. Fun song all the way around. I'm glad you like it too. Yo, yo. All right. Woo! <laughs> Two shots, and you can play in front of a group of nuns, <laughs> Drifter. <laughs> <laughs> Drifter, you'll get you'll get the hang of it. You'll get the hang of it. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Yo, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you guys are the best. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. I think it's time for another giveaway because you guys are amazing. We're gonna do another giveaway prize package right now for the same stuff. I'm gonna show you again. All right. Because I can't show you guys enough because this bottle opener is awesome. 
designed by my dad at Twisted Willow Fabrication, and it works awesome. I have it on my keychain. This will save people. You will be the savior at parties when nobody has anything to open up their beers. You can say, I got gotcha. you. Here it is. Bam. Works like a charm every time. And a Boots and Ballads sticker. Of course, a white Wallaroo phone wallet or boot wallet because it does stick inside the shaft of a cowboy boot. Also, my first CD, Gardener Hands. And this time, a blue tumbler with Circle B Western Wear on one side and the Boots and Ballads logo on the other side. It's kind of hard to see in this light because it's just so shiny. It's so well done by Twisted Wheel Fabrication. Whew, just wait till you get it in the mail, you winners. Wait till you get it in the mail. You will be impressed. Remember, you can always find more about Twisted Wheel Fabrication at twistedwheelfabrication.com. All right, so let me put this in the chat. Boom. A tumbler, Roberto. Yes, that blue one's up for grabs right now. Here we go. We're gonna go, comment now, bam, and it's going. Let me put this back on song view, cause I like that view. Stage view, get that ticker going. Stage view. You guys know, I have a fear of my fingers somehow being separated from my body. Probably because I use them so often, right? So every time that happens in a movie or something, I'm just like, ooh, he probably needed those fingers. Man, that's the worst. So I realized this, it's like one of my only cringe things horror movies or action movies or something like that, right? So I was doing some writing one day and I decided to uh, try to get over it a little bit. And I wrote about a character who's a loan shark. He's a bad guy and he really likes cigars. Yeah? He has two cigar cutters, right? One for his favorite brand of cigars, the Romeo y Giulietta. And the other one is for the fingers of the people who don't pay him back. Mm -hmm. So this song is called One for My Romeo y Julietas. <laughs> Trigger warning. <laughs> I'm familiar with your kind, my friend, and it's unlikely you'll have a respectable end but me. I'm a businessman, and I know life like this cigar in my hand. Too many people don't know if you cut it too high. It will unravel and leave you dry. I keep a one for my Romeo with Julietas, the other for your fingers. You say you want my money for a trip to Vegas. I have no confidence that you'll come back or see us. You were smarter than this, my only interests are cigars and interests. You're good for it, is all you say. But you ain't won nothing since that horse lucky day. And so you see my dilemma now, and the need for collateral before you leave town. I keep one for my Romeo with Julietas, the other for your fingers. You say you want my money for a trip to Vegas. I have no confidence that you'll come back to see us. Yeah. I'm beginning to get impatient, yeah. As you compromise my wealth. Since you don't use those fingers for counting cash, I guess. I will just help myself mm. I still don't think you understand The kind of trouble you're in, my man Let me lay it down straight for you 
see, part of my living come from gambling. I'm the gamblers, and I like to keep those who keep a good handle. But you come a bad hand, so I'll give you a bad hand instead of folding you in, making you a dead man. Ha! If you're still looking to leave here with green, you better be willing to part with your pinkies. Yeah, while I wait for you to make some digits, you have to leave some digits here with me. I keep one for my Romeo and Juliet ties, the other for your fingers. You say you want my money for a trip to Vegas, I will make sure that you come back to see us. Yes, all right now. One for my Romeo and Julietas. <laughs> yeah, that's a creepy one for you. <laughs> all right, all right. We're stopping it there. Bam. Boom. Okay, we got 90 folks on the stream right now. It's great to see you here. Why don't you hit that like button and maybe that share button while you're at it and see if we can't get this thing over 100 viewers live. Let me pick our winner right now, and it might take a second because I gotta count it out, and if it's a high number, whew, look out, look out. Let's do it. Thank you all for being here. You guys are the best. All right, here we go. Let's see here, let's kick it off from the beginning. You guys are incredible. I love you guys. Thank you so much for taking the time and hanging out with me this evening. I hope your week was great. This week was really warm here in Boston. Super pumped that it is starting to get a little bit warmer. You know what I'm saying? One, two, three, four. There it is. There it is. Bobby Yotter Sr. You win. You get it. You get the second prize package of the night. Here we go. We got to get the air horn working. Where's my air horn button? Here it is. Boom. Congrats, Bobby Yotter Sr. Congrats. Congrats. Woo. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> I'm in my own world when I sing. Totally true, Enrique. Totally true. Totally true. You gotta be. Got a, got some stories to tell in those worlds, you know what I'm saying? Got some stories to tell in those worlds. Alright, let me get this going here. Congrats, Bobby. You get it again. Again, you win the tumbler here with the boots and ballads on one side and the Circle B Western Wear on one, the other side. You got the CD here, my first CD, Gardener Hands, and a phone wallet, a Wallaroo phone wallet, Boots and Ballad sticker, and a bottle opener by Twisted Willow Fabrication. Yo. <laughs> Mr. Creeks got tequila in the house. Yes. Cheers to you. I got a, uh, I got a, um, what is this? A hot toddy. I got a hot toddy. It's good for the voice, right? You get a little bit of alcohol in the in the, the same sort of delivery method of the honey and the sweetness. It's good for the voice. And plus, this is probably the last the last night here that I'll be able to have one of these, actually, or actually want one because spring's coming, summer's coming, and that's not really hot toddy weather. That's more gin and tonic weather. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Here we go. You guys know what we usually do here in the middle of these streams. If this is your first one, first Boots and Ballads live stream, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I am so glad that you are joining us tonight for the giveaway. Of course, the giveaway is going to come at the end. I will announce the winner of the Tony Llama Boots from Circle B Western Wear. But we play music, do some boot chat, and just have a good old time. Just hang out, you know, be positive with each other. In fact, sometimes, um, sometimes 
Twisted Willow Fabrication is watching and does a Good Vibes giveaway. And it looks like they've already chosen their Good Vibes giveaway winner for this evening. And that is when they see somebody coming through the live chat with just lots of positive vibes. They want to reward that. They want to see more of that in the world. And who doesn't these days? You know what I'm saying? So part of them being on a stream is that they do a good vibes giveaway and they send the winner a step in the strongest way keychain of course step in the strongest way is from my song old boots got soul and they've just picked their good vibes giveaway winner for this boots and ballads live stream the good vibes giveaway winner tonight goes to Evelyn Mueller. Evelyn, Evelyn Mueller, congrats. You are the Good Vibes giveaway winner this evening. Thanks for being such a positive presence in the live chat. You are the best. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Shout out to Twisted Wheel Fabrication. And if anybody hasn't entered the uh, form and is just here to hang out, then please email me and I'll put my email in the chat right now. <clears throat> All winners should email me. Jeremiah. JeremiahCraig.com. There we go. All winners email me, please. And we just broke 100. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. I'm so happy to see you guys. It's not often these things go over 100, but when they do, it's a damn good time. <laughs> good to see you guys here. Good to see you. Woo! All right, all right. So like I was saying, we did some music. Now it's time, in the middle of these Boots and Ballads live streams, I always like to do a live boot video. And you guys have probably seen them on the YouTube channel if this is your first live stream. You're like, why the hell is that dude wearing headphones while he's doing a video? Well, that's because this is a live stream and I need to make sure everything's working right because I'm the only guy running it. <laughs> so it does look a little silly, but that's just what it comes with for live. And today we have a live video for you. And it has to do with the theme and the hero of the night. That would be Circle B, Western Wear, and all of the other small shops out there. Guys, guys, small shops are awesome. So today, I got five reasons why you should shop small for cowboy boots. Before you even head out to a big franchise name, Western Wear store, consider going independent, family-owned place first. Yeah, I got five reasons why you might wanna shop small and why they are sometimes, sometimes better than those big franchise Western stores. So let's get into it. <laughs> I love this. I love doing this. You guys are the coolest. All right, so I've been all over the country, right? From the West Coast to the East Coast to the Southwest to Texas, and I've been to so many different Western wear stores all across the nation. I've done videos, quick impressions in some of these small Western wear stores, and let me tell you, I have learned so much from these people, and they are so nice, okay? Now I'm gonna give you the first reason why you might want to think about heading to a small shop, small Western wear store before hitting up Cavender's, Boot Barn, Shep, any of these other big places, big franchise names. Okay, number one is that most times these small family shops are gonna give you the attention that you need when buying boots. Sean from Circle B Western Wear is the perfect example, okay? When you walk in there, it's already like you've been there before. Hey, how you doing, right? Can I help you find anything? He's so nice, and pretty much every other small store out there has really nice people working there, probably because they also own it, and 
their interest in making a living has to do directly with how well the store does, right? Which leads me to my second point, why you might want to consider shopping at small shops before going to some of the big franchises. I'm not saying skip them over altogether, but just give the small shops a look first, right? Because a lot of times they know the most about fit. Like I said, they own the store. They're not just working there for minimum wage. I got nothing against folks who are working at Boot Barn for minimum wage, but they've been in it longer. They know the tricks, right? My example from this is Davis Trailer World, right? Where I got my first boots and they're out by the back door today because I was wearing them earlier, so I can't show them in this video. But Davis Trailer World, was awesome. Alex Kruder, he's on the stream. We've been to, to Davis Trailer Worlds together several times and Miss Davis is awesome, right? She knows her stuff and I was there so frequently that she started to like take me under her wing and teach me about fit while I brought my friends there. She would ask me, you know, Jeremiah, how do you think that boot fits? And I'd say, well, Miss Davis, it looks a little bit sloppy. You know, she might want to try a different size. And she'd be like, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking too. She would teach me about fit. And that goes back to my first point is that they'll take the time with you, not only to help you find the right fit, but to also educate you so you are a more educated customer. And that's what we all need. We all need to be more educated customers, especially when it comes to boots, something that is supposed to last decades, years, decades, maybe an entire life that you could pass down to somebody else in your family. I mean, that's what you want. So I love the fact that small shops know so much about boots and are willing to share their knowledge with you, being patient in that you might not know much, but they want to help you because boots are an extremely personal thing that need to feel right in order to be comfortable, right? On to my third point of why you should give small shops a look before heading to the big franchise joints is that they carry different styles and brands. That's number three. They stock different toe shapes a lot of the times, right? I mean, I know some of you folks out there have complained to me in the comments section that when you go to those big franchise joints, all they have are the double stitched welt wide square toes. And it's just like, this is kind of boring. Let me see what else you got. Well, those small shops, those family run joints, they have lots of different styles, right? And they have lots of different brands too. Sometimes they even have the new old stock, right? Like Circle B Western Wear with the Tony Llama Bone Colored Lizard. This is a discontinued. This is one of those new old stocks that are still new in their store, but discontinued everywhere else in the nation, right? This is a hard boot to find, except when you go to CircleBWesternWear.com right? And brands too. A lot of the small shops carry smaller brands. Hondo is a perfect example. Boot Barn, Cavenders, they don't usually carry Hondos just because they're such a small shop and they can't keep up with the amount of boots that some of these big franchise places need to put on their shelves. So they then sell to the family owned small shops here and there. So when you go to those places, you are then finding brands that you usually wouldn't find at other franchise joints. Huge value, huge value. So definitely look at them first before you go on to some of the more franchise bigger joints. Actually, I touched on one of the, my next point in that last point is number four was sometimes they do carry the new old stocks. So just like I said, you know, sometimes you will find them cheap too because they're on clearance because that store knows they're discontinued. They know that they're having a little trouble selling them. So you could find them drastically reduced and end up getting a better boot at a better price from a family owned shop. And number five, 
You're supporting local, right? You know where your money is going. You're looking at the person who's going to end up with it, right? <laughs> You're just, it's not going to go up the chain into the CEO and all this stuff. Like it's going to end at that person, which is really cool. And the more that you know about making a difference and how we spend, it's nice to know where you get your boots from. When you go to a small shop, helping them stay around like we need to. We need these small shops, guys. We need them. And it's so much fun visiting them. I would hate to see them disappear. So those are my five reasons why you should just give the small shops a look before you go to some of those bigger franchise joints. What do you guys think? Did I miss anything? Is there anything else that you like about the smaller shops that you don't quite like about the franchise spots? Or do you like the franchise spots more because of different reasons that you can't get from the smaller shops? You know, definitely they are going to have a lot more space for brands, a lot more different kinds of uh, brands on the shelf. But I like the, the rarity, the, the styles and the stocks that they have at some of the small shops. So that's why I like to hit up the franchise places second. Evelyn says I nailed it. Thank you, Evelyn. <laughs> what else? What else do you guys got for me? What do you like about the small shops? Oh, Alan, the smell of leather in the small shops. So true. God, it is just, you walk into those and it's just like a high. It's, a, it's you just get it and you're like, oh, I got to get a pair of boots today. Even if you weren't planning on getting a pair of boots, you walk in there, it's just dangerous. It's dangerous walking in a boot store like that. I've walked into Davis Trailer World not planning on getting a pair of boots, and I ended up walking out spending $500. <laughs> I'm sure some of you have been in the same position. <laughs> some of these small shops have exclusive models as well, Rodrigo. That's a great point. You go to some of these small family-run spots, and they have their own boots that they have on the shelf. When I was at Al's Bootery and Repair Shop, they had special edition Tony Llamas that were just made for them. They had special edition Nakonas. So did Beth West in Snohomish, Washington. A lot of places do that with Anderson Bean and Olathe and uh, Finolio. A lot of these places make their own designs and then stock their shelves and that's the only place where you can find them that is a great point rodrigo thanks for sharing that <clears throat> vanessa you did not miss the draw it is coming up in a couple more songs rodrigo what is what is my impression of beth west western wear in washington i like it i like beth west you know they are hearkening back to the days where you had a whole bunch of different kinds of sizes, right? That is what they do. That's what they focus on. They have really small, wide sizes, and then they have really big, narrow sizes. And if you remember, when I was there, and uh, I was sized up for a 12B Nakona, they had it, and I tried it, and it fit really good. I didn't like the toe shape and the heel so much on that boot, but it was really impressive what they can do there. He just looks at your foot and says, you need a 12B. He brings it over, and sure enough, like he didn't even need to measure my foot. He just like, try this 11D, and then he's like, okay, I know what size, I know what real size you are. He brings over 12B, and boom, fit like a glove. It was amazing. And that's what I'm talking about. Going back to, they know their stuff, guys. They know their stuff at these small shops. You leave, you live 30 minutes away. Whew, that would be dangerous if I live 30 minutes away from that place. <laughs> you got it, DJ. You got it. <laughs> All right. All right. <clears throat> Chris, Christopher Carter had some Cayman once. Gorgeous. They fit enough at the store, but wearing them out, they'd kill your feet. Oh, that's such a shame. That is a shame. Sorry to hear that. My Cayman, they, they, I still get the spiritual experience whenever I put them on when I got them from uh, 
uh, Davis Trailer World. It all comes back, and I just feel as high as a kite. <laughs> <laughs> Stand tall, support small Vote with your cash so these small shops can last Stand tall, shop small <laughs> Yeah, shop small, y'all <laughs> All right, all right Whew, and that is the live segment yeah loving it loving it so happy to see you guys here so happy indeed whoo <clears throat> all right so we want to get back at the music here and i have a new song for you today but before we do the new song <clears throat> It's time for another little giveaway because we don't have very much longer before I announce the winner of these Tony Llama bone colored lizard boots from Circle B Western wear, right? So we got to give away the last prize package of the night. So again, it is a, a bottle opener. Okay, if you're just joining us, it's a sticker. It's a Wallaroo phone wallet or boot. It sticks inside of a boot as well. Boot wallet. A CD. This is my first CD, Gardener Hands. And a Tumblr, limited edition. There's only three of these. Actually, four. Circle B Western Wear has the other one. But limited edition. We're never making any of these again. This is a Boots and Ballads on this side and circle b western wear on this side it's engraved by twisted will fabrication awesome awesome shop right here in the usa in geneseo new york run by my parents they engraved that you can learn more about twisted will fabrication at twistedwillfabrication.com so this is a third and final live prize package giveaway and here we go so this is it this is it I'm gonna put in comment now in the live chat. Good luck, everybody. This is the last one. All right, now it's going. So, I guess I gotta do the live ticker too. Here we go, here we go. Let me pull up the ticker. So, Mr. Drifter emailed me the other day. He says, Jeremiah, every songwriter needs a song about a Cadillac. He says, you know, I just happen to have a Cadillac that is named Hank. Let me tell you about it, okay? So, I was reading this email and I really, really like the story of Drifter's Cadillac, Hank. So I wrote a song about it. And this is this is it, okay? And I just wrote it, so you'll have to be kind with me, because I might make a little bit of a mistake. I'm not trying to jinx myself or anything there. I'm just trying to cover my ass a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But Drifter says that this Cadillac was owned by the fire chief in his town. And when he was growing up, he'd always see the fire chief in his caddy and uh, he got the chance to buy it 14 years after the fire chief had passed and now he's named it Hank because the fire chief loved Hank Williams and it's still rolling smooth today and I wanted to play it for this video for this giveaway because Drifter said man if I won those white bone colored Tony Llama lizard boots that would be the pair of boots to go cruising around in Hank, my caddy. So this song is for Drifter about his caddy named Hank, and it's called Driftin'. We 
Well, the fire chief, he never drove far from town, so we'd always see his caddy rolling around. In 82, Sedan de Ville d'Elegance, always blasting eight tracks with Hank Williams songs. But when you hear that fire whistle blow, look out, buddy, cause don't you know he be drifting. I'll remember that old caddy from when I was a child And I always idolized the chief's courage and style It was 14 years after the chief had passed When I bought that old caddy with the Hank 8 tracks And now I love to roll it slow But I got to tribute when I hear the whistle blow So I be drifting <laughs> <laughs> there it is, drifting. <laughs> that one's for you, drifter. That one's for you. <laughs> stopping it there. Stopping it there. Keep on drifting. Keep on drifting. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. Thank you so much for the idea, drifter. <sighs> All right. We got a, we got a winner to pick here. And before I pick the winner, um, Moses on the last stream also had an idea for me of a song. So uh, I wrote that one too, but I just finished it this week. And it's something that I want to do more of. So if any of you watching out there have a good story for me, have something important to you and you want to share it and you want it to be in song forever, please email me your idea your story, something that you feel would be a really cool song. It might be short, kind of like this drifting song. It might be a little longer. I just sort of write it however long it needs to be, however long I feel that it needs to be. So no promises, no promises that I will actually write your song. You got to sell me on it, okay? You got to sell me on it. And then hopefully if I get enough of your stories by the end of the year, I will release an album full of songs that you guys wanted me to write, and I'll call it This One's For You, okay? So definitely email me, message me, tweet me, direct message me, put it on Facebook, share it with me, and I will let you know whether you've sold me or not. You gotta sell me on your story. I wanna hear your stories, and I wanna turn them into songs, but you gotta sell me. So definitely let me know if you have any ideas for songs huge thanks to drifter for sharing that idea with me let's pick a winner here we got 107 people in here thank you so much for joining me this evening let's get a winner for the last prize package mm, let's go and then i got one more song for you and we will choose we will choose the winner we will pick the winner of the tony llama boots from circle b Western wear. Not choose. It's a random, it's a random draw. <clears throat> all right. Boom. You guys are the greatest. So happy to see you guys all in here. All right. Here we go. Here we go. There it is. We got it. We got it. Enrique Merlio. Enrique Merlio, you get it. The last prize package of the night. 
Congrats, Enrique. Enrique Murillo. Congrats, congrats. Woo! Yes, yes. You get the yellow tumbler with the boots and ballads on one side and Circle B Western Wear on the other. You get my first CD, Gardener Hands, and a bottle opener, a sticker, and a phone wallet or boot wallet from Wallaroo. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. Thank you so much. Mm. Yo. All right. One more song here. One more song, and then we have our winner of the evening. You guys are so much fun. I have such a blast doing these. I hope you guys are having as much fun as I'm having up here. You know, next week is St. Patrick's Day, right? So I thought I would have to do something Irish here on the street. I mean, we're already drinking, right? So I got this song. This is one that I found on the Library of Congress website because you can just go on there and listen to a bunch of stuff that was collected and is pretty much in the public domain from uh, old immigrant songs to blues songs to just people who had gone around the country collecting the songs that people just sang to their kids and to their family members uh, at night or around a campfire. They would collect them and then they'd put them up with the Library of Congress, and now it's all digitalized. You can just go there and listen to a bunch of stuff. So uh, a few years ago, I was on there trying to find some cool songs, and I found this one. It's an Irish immigrant song called Wild Irish Boy, and it's about emigrating, emigrating from Ireland to the United States, missing the home country of Ireland, but being happy that they are in a country where there is so much more available to them with so much more opportunity. It's kind of a bittersweet song and I feel like it's important. Like it makes me feel like the, the, the twinge of home but also success. It's like what, which way do you want to go? Right? And this is something that so many Irish people had to deal with in uh, the past, in the early 1900s and before, right? So this is a good piece of American and Irish history here for you in the song called Wild Irish Boy. <laughs> Dear land, I leave far behind And farewell to my father Although he be blind Shall I ever forget him Although my heart beat with joy For he called me his darling The wild Irish boy Yes, he called me his darling The wild Irish boy Country. I had rogues on my feet and corduroy bridges, although I looked neat. Yet the boys all laughed at me, still it caused me great joy, for they called me the hero, the wild Irish boy. Yes, they called me the hero, the wild Irish boy. One they'll remember and never forget. It is Washington's dear friend, the bold Lafayette, who gave fortune and all, not wishing for fame, for he dearly loved freedom and Washington's name. Yes, he dearly loved freedom and Washington's name. for my parents and they will come here 
To a land filled with plenty And a land that love a dear And I know they will meet me As their hearts beat with joy For they called me their own son The wild Irish boy Yes, they called me their own son The wild Irish boy Never forget, and the time it may come when it will be happy. It would to God it would now. Oh, it would give me great joy for to gaze once more on it. The way wild I wish boy to to gaze once more on it. The way wild I wish boy. Wild Irish boy. There's a classic there for you. There's a classic, classic old folk song. Irish American folk song. Gotta love that stuff. That stuff, that stuff is what I live for right there. Mm. Whoo. All right. I think it's time. I think it's time, Neil. Big drum roll. <clears throat> we got a big drum roll here. It is time to announce the winner of the Tony Llama giveaway. Somebody's gonna be walking away with a pair of these boots right here or a different pair of Tony Llamas from Circle B Western Wear, depending on if you are one of those 60% who feels like they might want to, but just haven't had the chance to rock bone white colored boots. So, this is the moment that you have all been waiting for. Here we go, here we go. The winner of the Tony Llama Bone White Lizard Cowboy Boots from Circle B Western Wear at CircleBWesternWear.com is YouTube user Wolf Ranger 2008. Wolf Ranger 2008, you get the boots. You get the boots. Yes, Wolf Ranger. Wolf. Ooh, yeah, buddy. Yeah, Wolf Ranger 2008. Congrats. <laughs> Congrats, Wolf. Congrats. Are you on the stream? Are you on the stream? I want to see you in the live chat. I want to see you. I swear I saw you earlier. I want to see you, Wolf. Let's go. <laughs> I want to see you. Oh, Wolf Ranger 2008. I swear I saw him in the live chat way early. Way early. <laughs> I swear, like even before I put on this, the pre-stream trailer stuff, he, he left? Oh! <laughs> oh man, he's going to be pumped when he gets that email later. <laughs> Wolf Ranger. Nope, not disqualified. Not disqualified. He'd be disqualified for from any of these other little prize packages, but... <clears throat> <laughs> Oh man, oh man, I'm so happy. Wolf Ranger, he, he comments quite frequently on the YouTube channel. I see him coming through every so often, so I'm glad to see somebody who's been with me for so long win a pair of boots. I mean, I don't care if you're new, if you're coming through and you just saw the video, you're like, I, I, could, I could try to win a pair of boots. I don't I don't think this Jeremiah Craig dude is anything special, but I'll take his boots. I'll be like, yeah, here you go. Here's some boots. But I really like it too when somebody who actually watches the channel on a regular basis wins those boots. And that's what happened today. So whether he is here or not, I'm just really happy that it goes to somebody who supports me on a regular basis because all of you who are here right now who support me on a regular basis, oh, you guys are the best. It means so, so, so much to me. I love you guys. Love you so much. Mm. 
Where's Wolf Ranger? <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> 3 10 a.m. in France, Matthias. That's dedication right there. Thank you for staying up so late. Great group tonight, Carol. So true. So true. I had so much fun. So much fun. I love playing music and talking boots with you guys and doing some giveaways. I don't have another giveaway lined up quite yet, but you can bet your ass that I'm working on getting another giveaway soon. I'm sending out emails every single day, guys. Whew. Sending out every single day. Because I love getting boots on people's feet. I got one more song for you guys here tonight before uh, we finish off the scheduled and planned portion of the show. And then after that, I will make myself available here for any questions or if you want me to play more songs or if you want to talk more boots. The show is up to you guys at that point. But I wanted to finish off with this here song. It's called Jack Be Nimble. Back in college, I started playing a lot of my own songs, my written songs up on stage, and it was the first time that I have ever really done that. I started messing around writing songs in college, but I never really performed them. I would record them on a bunch of CDs, and let me tell you, they sounded awful listening back to them now, but that's a story for another day. I would just start to perform the songs I had written up on stage, and to give me a little bit of confidence, I would sort of put that feeling into another name, right? And that name was Jack Swift. This was before Taylor Swift became popular. And I started performing under the name Jack Swift as it was kind of a personality to bring my music writing self to life, right? And then I started a band with a bunch of my friends there on college campus, on the college campus, we were called the Jack Swift Band. And we went on tour, we recorded a couple albums, and one time we recorded a show. It was actually our first show that we did in the quad, and it was for American Band, right? It was like American Idol, but they were taking their chances at doing the whole band thing, right? They wanted to do the same thing, but with for singers, so they called bands and said, send us a DVD of a live show and maybe we'll call you in and have part of this competition. So we recorded our live set. It was a really good one. It was like our first one. Sent it off to them and they never did anything with the show. But uh, it got me thinking and I wrote this song after the fact because there's always more than one way to skin a cat. That's basically what this song is about, right? And you can try a whole bunch of different things no matter what you're trying to do in your life. There's a bunch of different ways to get at it. Like my brother Levi, when he was doing math all throughout school and probably still today, the teachers would mark him wrong even though he got the question right because he didn't follow the directions of how to actually get that answer that they told him to use. He figured out his own answer, right? And just because I sent in a DVD to American Band, that isn't the make or break, right? So I've been doing this for 10 years. The Jack Swift Band, we all went our own way, way but our idea in this, my idea in this being more than one way to skin a cat and play music for my living, is in this song and that's why I love it so much and I wanted to end off tonight with it. It's called Jack Be Nimble. And it's about finding any way to make your dreams come true. I sent in the package 
just the other day And I know that you told me It's not the only way We'll go about masquerading Dance down Melody Lane Just like too few ever do You hear the horns are blowing And the notes carried by the wind And you better listen close, love You won't hear it the same again Jack, now I'm in an alley And I'm up against the wall With all my friends so far away You're the closest one to call So Jack Last week I took Aunt Paula Just a piece of your clothes She said she wanted to see How it wrinkled and how it flowed I don't know what she thinks I haven't spoken with her since It might be weeks or months Or we might never hear from her again But Jack, won't you still help me And move with haste For you know we have not Much more time to wait The mirror is my fear in future years And I don't want to visit you in the graveyard on Sundays With my eyes full of tears For now, Jack, the eyes on you go with me safe and go with me true. Yeah, Jack, be nimble and Jack, be swift. Jack, come around now and give me a lift because you know I have been feeling just a little low and I need a good, need a good, need a good friend to come around and sing hello. Jack be nimble.
Whoo! All right. That is the last song that I have planned for you this evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining me on this Boots and Ballads Tony Lama Circle B Western Wear giveaway. Congrats to all the winners and to Wolf Ranger 2008 for being the grand winner of the day, winning the Tony Lama Bone Lizard Boots. <laughs> from Circle B Western Wear. Congrats to everybody who won the small prize packages as well. I will either find you in the forms that you filled out and email you all of the winners, or you can get a head start and email me so that maybe that whole process happens a little faster. And I will try to get your prizes out on Monday. You guys are the greatest. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to put a new battery in the camera and I will be right back if you guys wanna hang out for some post-show fun, a little bit more casual sort of deal. Ask me some questions. I'll play some songs if you have requests of songs that you know of mine that you wanna hear. I can do that. Uh, I'm gonna turn it over to you in one second, but I just wanna say, Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. You guys make this channel run. You guys make these giveaways possible. And that's why I love doing them because I want to get boots on your feet. You guys are the best. Love you. I will be right back. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. Hey guys, how's it going? Let me fix the camera. How's that? Is that better? That looks a little better. Yo, how's it going? How was the stream tonight? Was it a good one? That felt good. It felt good to me. <clears throat> you guys were you guys were on point. The energy that I was feeling through the live chat was awesome. I loved it. Love feeling that energy. Lucas wants to hear suit of, Man in the Suit of Mirrors right off the bat. Yo, I can do that. I can do that. Where's my... Yo, Wes. Good to see ya. Good to see you guys. Whoo. Oh, man. I love these. I love these live streams. I love the fact that I do a little bit more 
uh, organized portion and then doing the sort of casual stuff here at the end with you guys. It's just a lot of fun. I, I, I enjoy both those parts. I like, I like to put on a show, but I also like to chill with you guys too. So I'm glad that you guys can get down with both <laughs> because both are so much fun. I'm so glad you like the sound, DJ. The uh, new mixer, I'm starting to really get a hang of it. Uh, my brother-in-law got me a, my brother-in-law and his girlfriend got me a gift card to Reverb.com and then my parents also gave me a little bit of money from Christmas to get a compressor and I found a mixer with a compressor in it that also went into my computer so I love this thing it's a Yamaha MG10X it is badass it is badass what's up Jeff Horton good to see you thank you so much Katie Wolf Ranger there you are there you are <laughs> where were you when I announced that you were the winner of the boots <laughs> Where were you? Where'd you go? <laughs> Wolf Ranger, I want to know, are you going to choose the white bone-colored lizard ones, or are you going to choose a different Tony Lama from Circle B Western Wear? What boots are you going to choose? <clears throat> what boots? We got to know. Oh, he was polishing his boots? Hey, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> that's a good time to, to be polishing the boots. Oh, your connection went out. No, that's the worst. <laughs> oh, what a, what a time to lose connection. <laughs> you are doing the white bone color lizard. That's what I'm talking about, my man, Wolf. My man, I'm so glad that you're gonna be choosing the white bone color ones. Whew, I hope they got your, I hope they got your size. Whew, what size are you? They got, they had a few, they had the most, I feel like, in this size, which is another reason why I chose it, um, because I figured that it would most likely be probable that somebody would be able to fit into the boots, so hopefully they have your size in this boot, because it is a discontinued thing. Either way, love it. I'm so glad you're choosing them. So glad you're choosing them. <laughs> Carlos wants an encore of the one shot or the drifting song. <laughs> we'll see, maybe I'll do drifting on, on coffee and music on Monday. I gotta practice that song. I really gotta practice it. <laughs> what time is it here, Mark asks. It's 9.30 p.m. here on the East Coast in Boston, Massachusetts. I can do banjo next, John. charm he rolls into the room his three hounds at his back entering with him is the lights of the moon to light the dark within you showing you what you lack he has no title of power but assumes the air it is mysteriously loud it is his suit that makes him familiar to you and it brings your guard down And now, tell your mother to take you back home Tell your mother my fears Tell your mother to take you back home And be afraid of the man in the suit of me There was an old country ball in the Smithson barn. A wealthy family, twas said, in his usual attire under another name. 
into that ball he tread. Now, Gerald Smithson owned the mine down the hill. He held parties as he pleased. After a little ale, he told the man in the suit his wealth made him sleep easily. Now the man in the suit found a young Mary Smithson, the trophy that made Gerald's spouse. Mary had never met someone quite like herself. Soon offered him a tour of the house. She giggled and flirted as he jested his way. From different rooms she would lead. Till they came to the bedroom where he sat on the bed. Twas a good mattress indeed. <laughs> hey, tell your mother to take you back home. Tell your mother my fears. Tell your mother to take you back home and be afraid of the man in the suit of me. Smithson went looking for his wife in dire need of a waltz. He went to the house and he called from downstairs. He heard only the echoes of his calls. Climbing the staircase, he went to his room. A cool breeze as he opened the door. His mattress was thin and there were only a few dollars left. Mary lay bare on the floor. Take you back home and tell your mother my fears. Tell your mother to take you back home and be afraid of the man in the suit of me. Suit of mirrors. Thank you for the request, Lucas. All right, let me get the banjo. <clears throat> Play some banjo for John. Yo, anybody got stories for me from the uh, for songs? <clears throat> so I got the drift in one, and then uh, Moses said last live stream you should do a. Uh, video about new boots but I took it a step further and did new boots in boot shopping so that's what the song is about it's just maybe it might be just called boot shopping <laughs> because that's fun <clears throat> all right I got the uh, banjo here just let me open up the case and Get the banjo out. <clears throat> See you, Rodrigo. Thank you so much for joining me. Chile, yeah. Buddy, that's what I'm talking about. Mm. <clears throat> New equipment indeed, John. Loving this. Plus, I'm learning the setup a little bit more, learning how to, learning how to use this technology a little bit better than before. I can, I can only learn so much at one time. <laughs> dogs and boots. <laughs> you got a good story about dogs and boots? I'll write that story. You got a, you got a great love story for me? Email me, Bobby. Email me that love story. You gotta sell me on it. You gotta sell me. We're gonna do another murder ballad here. What's my favorite vehicle and favorite boots? Talking about the places they've been. Ooh, that's a good one, Carol. That's a good one. Jeez. 
I feel like it would probably be a 15 minute long song if, uh, if I did about those Boulay 7031s, right? <laughs> Am I finding more pointed and or round toes in my travels? Uh, well, I haven't been on the road in a year, uh, but before it was still mainly like the square toes, uh, square toes and <clears throat> those kinds of boots, but I guess you do see them. I like, I like seeing more of the seven toes, like those narrow square toes. I'm seeing, I before, before, you know, at the, world shut down. I was definitely seeing more of those, which is something that I really like to see. I like that look. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> the seven is your favorite. That's a good favorite. You got the Stetson lizards, Bobby? Damn, are they the JBS lizards, like the ones that I got? Cause that is a nice boot. If not, still Stetson. Whew. Nicely done, Bobby. Nicely done. French toes and seven toes, Carol says. Gotta love it. What's my thoughts on the hippo boots? I'll tell you in one second. I like them. <laughs> We got reverb. I show up at your window with a slight sip of your tone. You give it a whetstone moan on your night alone. A ring can stop a leak, but it won't plug a hole. And it can't chain away. Partners of a soul I come around, round, around Since that moon shone off your gown I come around, around, around Since the moon shone off your gown Yeah, don't you mind the shine They're coming from my grind I take you down to the willow with a bottle of wine At the end of the night I make so that you're mine Yes, in the end you will be mine Take you down to the dark, cool river to be read by light. A big low moon throws shadows from the great willow's height. And I was the one that should have stood beside you while you were downed in white. So I give you the whetstone moan by the end of the night. I come around, around, around since that moon shone off your gown. I come around, around, around since the moon. Shown off your gown, yeah. Don't you mind the shine? They come from my grind. I take you down to the willow with a bottle of wine. At the end of the night, I make so that you're mine. Yes, in the end, you will be mine. Come and shine upon me alone as I take a seat on the cobblestone. The fuzz come around and ask me where she's gone as they notice my bloody blade and my soaked through clothes. I come around, around, around since the moon shone off a gown. I come around, around, around since the moon shone off a gown. was made.
a little Weststone moan there for you. That song is on my album, Lost Keys and Lounge Strange, that I did with Jake Boucher in Arizona. Yeah. Woo. All right. You, want, you wanted one of those tumblers, Governor? <laughs> <laughs> oh man of course you can get tumblers just like it jeremiahcraig.com slash store wink wink nudge nudge and when you do get the tumbler like this this is one of the uh, ones that twisted wheel fabrication makes that's more of the mug shape with the handle I really like this one I use this one on a lot of coffee and musics. But when you get one of these, right, you got the code on the back, right, that gets you access to the Boots and Ballads Vault, where you can get early access videos and you can schedule a boot shopping thing with me, uh, where we'll just go on Shop Goodwill or eBay or offer up and just look at a whole bunch of different kinds of boots and we can say, yeah, you should get this one, you should get this one, or maybe I might get this one since I'm shopping here with you. I'll put in a bit on this boot right now. Like we'll just we'll just shop for online for uh, a half an hour or something like that. And then there's also opportunities to win stuff sometimes, right? This past week. I had a Gator wallet up for grabs. Uh, you saw it on the channel, the BNV Gator wallet. That wallet that I got for that video, I put it up in the vault and it was like, enter to win. And there weren't very many people who entered to win, like five people. So right now is a good time to be in the vault because your chances of winning stuff even goes higher than being here live with me. So death like reviews ended up winning that gator wallet so you guys don't know what you're missing on the vault and i'm gonna be growing it more and more and more this year also trying to do some limited edition merch in there if you wanted to get something that uh, is super rare kind of like like one or two three four five things like this <clears throat> if you really want some boots and ballads bragging rights you know what i'm saying so lots of cool stuff happening in the vault and the way that you get in there is buying something that was made by twisted wheel of fabrication whether it's a keychain a tumbler or the boot jack so it ranges from like eight dollars to over a hundred so whatever you get you're in the vault at least from twisted wheel of fabrication that's made in my in my um store Evelyn, how long did it take me to learn the banjo? It took me, I don't know. Uh, my mom could probably tell you that better than I could. Because <laughs> she was there listening to me play the same song over and over and over again. I would say probably like a year, maybe six months to a year before I could like play it in front of people. And I m played it at the talent show at my high school. So I, I played, I, I played it all the time. When I after I got it because I wanted to play some musical instrument but I didn't want to play in the band I tried trumpet for the school band didn't like it tried a little bit of guitar because my dad played guitar but everybody else in school was playing guitar if they weren't in band already they were playing guitar so I decided I wanted to play the banjo and once I got the banjo I just wouldn't stop playing it so it didn't take long, maybe like six months. And it's also tuned to open G. So all you really got to do to make a chord is just put your finger across the entire fret. And then that's a chord, right? So chords are really easy on the banjo if you want them to be. Of course, you can do more complicated chords. and I did, but if you, are, if you don't know a chord, you can just sort of count and be like, okay, if that's G and I go up five frets, and I just put my finger across all the strings, then that's a C chord. So, I mean, it's just sort of, it was a little bit easier. It's, with a guitar, you, you don't have that freedom. And with the guitar, you have six strings, and with the banjo, you have five strings, but you're really only pressing down four at any one time. 
It's just a matter of the picking pattern with the banjo is what you got to learn. So I would say that it was like maybe six months, six months to a year. You've been trying to play the banjo for 50 years and still can't? <laughs> Hey, I'd be the same way with trumpet. I'd be the same way with trumpet. See you, Enrique. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. You're the best. You're the best. <clears throat> you played trumpet for years, Drifter? And that's what it is. Everybody has their their niche, their instrument. If you want to do music, maybe you just got to try a bunch of different instruments and then finally get it. And finally land on one and then grow it from there once you figure out what you like. Like I started with the banjo and then I learned the harmonica and then I finally learned the guitar. So those that was my progression into things was doing that. See ya, Roberto. Thank you for joining tonight. You are the best. Happy to see you here. <clears throat> Jeff Horton played the trombone. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so cool. What do they call it when they when you do the slide when you're doing the uh, marching band? They call it tailgating or something like that. That that was always a fun move. I like to watch. He's like, woo. Jonathan Smith asks, "What college did I attend? I went to the Rochester Institute of Technology in Rochester, New York. I first went to Monroe Community College. I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to learn." how to be a history teacher, except as I learned more and more and more about how they taught teachers to teach, it got a little bit like, oh, this is not really, this is not really for me, I don't think. Once you, once you get inside that, even just dip your toes, you start to see all of the weaknesses in the educational system. And it didn't seem like something that I could, I could fix or do something with by myself uh without having to follow all these rules and like go by the book which is sort of they had like these unwritten rules that you also had to do and it was just like no this isn't for me so then i went to the rochester institute of technology and i didn't know what i wanted to do so i was undeclared business for a year and then i finally decided on going to the communication school and learning how to do advertising and public relations, which has definitely helped me out a lot doing all this YouTube stuff. And then I worked for marketing agencies and technology companies being a marketer for seven years, seven, eight years before going out on my own and doing uh, YouTube and music and some freelance marketing work on the side too. But uh, this is pretty much what I do now and uh it's all thanks to you guys it's all thanks to you guys in fact uh i am going through the process of becoming an llc right now it's pretty crazy would never have thought that this whole thing music youtube uh, uh videos content boots here and there would be an llc but it's looking like the paperwork is going to be going through so we're looking at Jeremiah Craig Entertainment or Jeremiah Craig Media LLC this year. It's going to happen. We're going legit. <laughs> Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you. <laughs> We're going legit. Limited Liability Corporation. You know it, Roberto. You're working on your third degree, Roberto. What is your first two and what are the ones, which ones are you working on now? how much to hire for your wedding <laughs> let's make it legit <laughs> it depends on when your wedding is do you, are, do you are you engaged now you got somebody you're gonna marry <laughs> we can we can we can get this you know who knows maybe we're gonna have to talk we're gonna have to talk i'm gonna have to talk to my uh, CPA and my lawyers and we'll get something settled <laughs> you construction manage it now environmental studies and pre-law damn you're a busy dude wow that is a lot of stuff 
And it sounds like you're going to be making a lot of money with those three degrees in all of those three areas because that is pretty impressive. Congratulations, Carlos. You are engaged. When is the date? You guys set a date yet? Congratulations. Carlos, you need a winner on that. Congratulations to Carlos being engaged. Woo! <laughs> Winner, 100%. <laughs> DJ is a career st- Robert Roberto is just a career student. <laughs> Never too late to learn, 100%. I completely agree. We all sh- always should be learning. Always should be learning something new. Congrats. Congrats. Mm. He can represent his own company. When is the date, Carlos? You guys got a date? Set yet? <clears throat> Yeehaw, Hugo, Hugo. Woo, that's what I'm talking about. Mm. Mm. RIT has a large hearing impaired community. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> yep. Which is a definitely a interesting part of the school. It's it's interesting to 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 be a part of that and see that culture there too, and the funny thing is is that the deaf students were all at a lot of the parties that all the hearing students would be at too because uh, they'd like to feel they felt the bass of the music right they feel the bass and that's one of the reasons why they liked going to the parties so we 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 saw. Uh, the hearing impaired students all over campus and even off campus too, all the time. <clears throat> Looking at June, if COVID eases up, fingers crossed for you. Fingers crossed for you, Carlos. <clears throat> you agree on the teaching stuff, DJ? <sighs> what do you teach? Hopefully, they can fly the airport planes. Yeah. You're in Oregon? Who waiting for the Cayman to go on sale at Yeehaw Cowboy? Don't forget that I got the code. It'll save you 10% automatically, but you know, you can tack on that 10%. Hopefully, if there's not doing double codes or anything, if it's like a sale period, then you can tack on that code and get even more 10% off. So you could end up with, I don't know, a good chunk of change saved off. They I if I remember last year. They did sales around Memorial Day and maybe July 4th. If I think those are probably the sales that are going to be coming up with Yeehaw Cowboy if they do the same that they did last year. So definitely keep an eye out for Memorial Day and uh, the July 4th weekend too. <clears throat> you taught K through 6. Whew, that's got to be tough. I didn't want to teach Keith. I didn't want to teach that young. I wanted to do like middle school or high school history. Uh, you know, storyteller here. Go figure. <laughs> you got. You can't forget about the code, Bobby. You can't forget about the code. Go jeremiahcraig.com slash promo codes because apparently the code got scraped by some uh chrome extension or something so people can just sort of plug in the code who don't follow me so a jose is going to be changing it every so often so you got to check jeremiahcraig.com slash promo code for the most recent code and it'll save you 10 percent. right now i believe it's jc10 use jc10 at checkout and i'll save you 10 percent. period <clears throat> You bought those Stetsons without the code. Oh, no. <laughs> you just have to wait for the next pair of boots to go on sale and then tack on the code with the sale price and then save the better chunk of change and it'll make up for it the next time around. <laughs> Lucas has got those new Hondos today. Oh, man, those look so good, and I'm so happy that they fit. I'm so happy that they fit. You got the new Lucchese J-Toes coming next week. It's a good couple of weeks for you, Lucas. It's a good couple of weeks. 
Evelyn, you asking about the lizard boots that I got? These these Tony Llamas breaking in? They're breaking in pretty good. They're breaking in nice. Uh, they were pretty stiff when I got them, um, but I put some conditioner on them and I've been wearing them around. This today was the first day that I actually wore them outside because it was dry enough and warm enough too. So I haven't been wearing them too much, but uh, they are breaking in nice. And I like these Tony Llamas too. They're, they're made the traditional way with the hard leather insole. And I just prefer that because, you know, as they break in, you get the, the foot impression in the leather. Uh, just like most of these boots that I have up here on the rack, four out of six of them have uh, hard leather insoles. So I just like, I just dig that. And uh, that's what these have too, these Tony Llamas. So they're breaking in nice. They're breaking in nice. You so want to try Hondos, Bobby? Uh, I recommend it. I, I really like the Hondos. I really like Hondos. Uh, Johnson, is my wife behind the camera? No, it's just a tripod. Uh, I'm, I'm the only one in this room right now. <laughs> Sometime I would like to have somebody uh, run the board and help me with some of this stuff, sort of make the transition so I'm not over here like, uh, what button do I need to press and do stuff like that? Uh, it would be nice to have somebody to help me, but I don't think my wife would be down for that. <laughs> I don't think she would like to do that. <laughs> so I try to make the transitions as easy for me to go back and forth. <laughs> Crazy nice, Lucas says. With that stimulus money, whoo, that's what I'm talking about. Mm. What do you guys think about actually doing a dedicated Q&A? Because that's basically what we're doing right now, just sort of hanging out. If you guys have questions for me, do that. Um, but somebody asked, and uh, I know maybe some folks don't want to go and wait the two hours and 17 minutes <laughs> or whatever this is, two hours to get to a Q&A session. You guys think that it's uh, something that, uh, that I should do? Or at least try once and see how it goes on the on March 26th. Would you be interested in seeing something like that? Yeah. All right. Cool. John likes it. Sierra likes it. Thank you. Evelyn likes it. Okay. Cool. Could be interesting. Sounds like Carol has her doubts, but I mean, she pretty much asks all the questions, anyways. <laughs> So, I mean, all you guys, you guys on the stream right now, you're like, yeah, what? Sure. We, we'll just ask you any old time. <laughs> all right, Evelyn, you got it. Give it a go. You'll ask a bunch. Cool. Sounds good. Probably get overwhelmed. Well, that's the, uh, that's, that's part of why I wanted to do it through the voice messages too is that uh, it sort of breaks it up a little bit and then I can hit it up in the live chat too. But I don't know if it, maybe, maybe it'll get overwhelming. I hope it gets overwhelming. That would be fun if there were that many people live. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Moses got the Chisos boots coming. Congrats, Moses. Oh man, I'm so pumped for you to get those Chisos. The number ones in browns, right? Damn, nice. Can can I say something in Spanish? I can't say something in Spanish, Roxy. I'm sorry. That is one of my goals, though, is to learn Spanish at some point. Uh, I really want to learn Spanish so that I can start making uh, content in Spanish or communicating with those of you who speak Spanish primarily. Uh, I've noticed in some of my analytics that there is a large portion of my audience is primarily speak Spanish speaking or from Mexico. So I do want to learn Spanish. It will probably take a couple of years before I get to the point where I can actually do it fluently and make it understandable. So you'll have to be patient with me. Eventually I want to be there and uh, do Spanish content, uh, but I just need to learn it first. So. It'll take some time to do that. You know Spanish, Chris, Mr. Chris? I could definitely use somebody to chat. 
with after learning the uh, after learning the what the basics, right? Because that's how you learn the best is by actually talking to people. So I could, I would definitely want to take anybody up who just wants to talk for 15 or 30 minutes in Spanish. Once I get the basics down, I will chat with you uh, in Spanish. I would love it. And it would help me out a lot when I do get to that point. I will email you. I will email you. Thank you, Mr. Chris. I appreciate it. Diego, you know it too. I'm down. Whew. Roberto, I'm going to be calling all you guys. I'm going to be calling all you guys. I played, Ken, I played Romeo and Julietas earlier on in the, in the, uh, you're fluent too, Bobby. I played it earlier on in the stream, Ken. <clears throat> I'll play it again if people want to hear it again. Um, but uh, everybody already heard it, I think. Leon is awesome. I remember going to Leon with uh, Jose, Yeehaw Cowboy. I'm going to be doing a video about Leon here soon. Uh, basically, like, where are Tacova boots made, right? Because a lot of people search for that. So I'm going to be making that video and talking about that they're made in Leon, but talking about all the other boot companies that are down there too and showing footage of the city that uh, that I took when I was down there. So this should be a fun video. Probably a short, shorter one because it's sort of a high... A lot of people search for it, so I don't think that it'll be anything like uh, 8, 10, 12 minutes or anything. It'll probably be like 3 or 5 minutes, but it should be a fun one to make. <clears throat> you want me to play my all-time favorite that I've ever written, Carlos? <clears throat> Evelyn wants me to play uh, the, <laughs> the one from my Romeo and Julietas again. You want to hear some Commandeer? I do like Commandeer a lot. Um, I, that is one of my favorites. Um, I'm trying to think what would be my favorite song. It just depends on the day. The favorite, My favorite song that I've ever, ever written uh, depends on the day. I, I, like, I like Man in the Suit a lot. Uh, that one was like a... When I wrote it, it was like a level up for me. And I started to understand how I wanted to write songs and the stories that I wanted to tell with them. Excuse me. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll um, throw this in. Uh, take off my ring for that one because it goes on the strings. About the same time that I wrote The uh, Man in the Suit of Mirrors, I wrote another song that <clears throat> was right along the same sort of lines as that because it told a story right something happened in it and that's when i started to uh go down this balladeer path right i wanted to write stories <clears throat> murder ballad stories but also funny stories and once i wrote these two songs i was like okay these are the kinds of songs that i want to write it was man in the suit of mirrors and then shortly thereafter i wrote nights and weekends <clears throat> two different songs on two completely different ends of the spectrum <clears throat> So I'm going to finish off this one with Nights and Weekends, and I f feel like it's a good one. Um, it kind of answers your question about which is my favorite, just because it's like it, it, it goes back to the foundations of when I started writing stories in songs. It was Man in the Suit, and then this one about a gigolo. It's a gigolo origin story song called Nights and Weekends. Five 
5,000 in debt. So many regrets he can't count them on his hands and toes. Another late notice from Alice the Mad Lady. She got eyes for him to cure his woes. He says, how about I come on over tonight? It look like you're in need of a good time. At first he declines. But then she flashed a Benny and it changed his mind. All those Benjamin Franklins will do it every time. See, Alice was nothing special. She looked like a pear in a plastic bag and with a few decades of driving mail. Places of her began to sag, but after he accepted the offer, his face turned one of the deepest shades of red. A big smile came to her face. She touched his cheek and then she said, You don't need no candles, no. You don't need no wine. You don't need your bed made up with those linens so fine. I'm only asking of you for just one thing. He said it's good, but in the future, nights and weekends is the time to call. Yeah. The night was heavy on him as he got ready for the arrival of Alice. And even though he really didn't have to, he shaved to have a nice, smooth phallus. And when the night was over, she said, you know, I got some friends who'd be into this kind of thing. You need help and you can help them. Speak up, boy, now what do you think? You don't need no candles, no. You don't need no wine. You don't need your bed made up with those linens so fine If they ask for you, they're asking for just one thing You said you tell them The nights and weekends is the time to call Yeah <laughs> And his phone started getting all of those notifications Just folks sliding into those DMs Picking up the phone and calling the old-fashioned way Oh, yeah, his phone sounded like a harmonica solo debt with no regrets except for one but he got that cured it was all for Alice on her route every day she was out there spreading the word he was booked out for the first two years that is until he raised his price now you better have big money if you wanna head on over to his place tonight now he buys the candles yeah and he buys the wine he's got his bed made up with those linens so fine and if you ask for him, you asking for just one thing, but remember that nights and weekends is the time to call. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> nights and weekends. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man see you Bobby see you Bobby <clears throat> you guys are the best you guys are the best thank you so much Vanessa thank you thank you thank you <sighs> thank you thank you thank you <laughs> I'm glad you liked it Jeff <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> worn out. But I had a hell of a time with you guys. I had a hell of a time. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. Thank you for hanging out with me on this Boots and Ballads giveaway. Maybe 
going a little bit longer than when we usually do. I mean, it's usually around two hours. We're right around that two-hour mark right now uh, without the uh, that pre-stream stuff, or the trailers before the, the live stream. So pretty much regular time here, but damn, did I have a blast. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I hope you have a spectacular weekend. And uh, we'll see you next week. I got uh, some stuff coming here. Got the extended test tomorrow for some Ariat Cowhand boots. So hopefully I can get the Ariat extended test for the Cowhands up in the vault on Tuesday. And then if you're not in the vault, you'll have to wait an extra week to see those. But uh, we got the area cowhand coming and the boule 9381 extended test coming in april too so working on getting some other boots through here and maybe another giveaway soon cannot wait to do another giveaway because these boots and ballads live streams are the cream of the crop as far as the live streams are concerned but we might do another themed live stream before then too i can't stay away from doing these things they are too much fun and i love playing for you all anyways so i hope you have a great night you guys are the best could the next could the next prize be a one-on-one -on -one live video you mean like a zoom call you could just if you just if you if you get one of these if you get one of these all you have to do is email me if, if all you gotta do is email me if you get a if you get a if there's a form on the vault carlos so yeah, i guess i could do that if you want totally but it's already available to all the vault folks too <clears throat> and recommend any skin cleaners for genuine elephant skin uh i'm not i don't have a lot of experience with elephant but elephant is really tough it, how like if it's really really dirty you probably could get away with doing saddle soap once and then throwing some conditioner on there but a lot of times you're probably just okay brushing the dust and the dirt off and then just condition it with big four that's what i do to my wife's elephant boots i don't have any elephant boots right now but um my wife's get the big four and they work great. Big Four is awesome stuff. You use it on anything pretty much except for rough outs and distressed leather and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> Area Work Hog Boots. Did a, I did that already. I did that already. I am. I do have some hybrid... Oh, I don't even know. I don't even remember what they're called. Hybrid something over there that I got to do. And that will probably be in April. Um, so, we're coming up. We're, we're doing lots of extended tests here. We are hustling. I got some content for you guys this year, and I'm pumped to show it to you all. You're the best. Love you guys. I hope you have a spectacular re weekend, spectacular rest of your night. Thank you so much for joining me. Congrats to all the winners, and I'll see you around online tomorrow and next week on the Facebook boot group, on YouTube, wherever you are. I'm going to try to be there, too. Love you guys. Have a spectacular rest of your night. Thank you so much for joining me. Peace.